Yes. Before we ever met, Eric and I passed each other figuratively, crossing the Atlantic in opposite directions, because as John described earlier this morning, Eric came over in 1981 to Cambridge. I left to go to a postdoc in Seattle. And it was actually later when I revisited Cambridge that I first met Eric. And then again, as, as John um, described, uh, lots of get togethers, uh, meetings. I was living in the States, so I went to Amqua. Eric came to the QRC. I saw him in Minnesota several times. And I guess with the confidence of youth, um, I uh, had to travel um, by myself across the country in a small moving van from Vermont to Oregon and asked Eric if I could come and stay with him on the way. And I still have such fond memories of, of showing up um, in a heat wave, um, coming to his house and being greeted by Eric Jane and a very tiny Maria and spending a lovely evening with them. And Maria made me a picture, obviously displaying early talent um, uh, uh, in the family tradition. And, and that picture I had with me for years in my office. And it always reminded me of my more warm welcome in the Grimm household. And it, it, there was a little place in my heart ever after that for, for Eric um, and, and his family. Um, so our paths crossed and recrossed, and then um, I moved back to the UK. And uh, about ten years ago, Eric was on was on one of his missions to various countries where he was personally ensuring people got a new version of of Tilia and and knew how to use it. And he came to visit us and our students and, and subsequently uh, came off with me and Henry Lamb and Emma um, to visit the Jurassic Coast, the fossil cliffs and Icky, the ichthyosaur discovered by Mary Anning. And I, I do remember his tremendous um, enthusiasm, uh, it, not minding the awful weather and an amazing calmness when for some reason best known to myself, I set off down a country lane on the wrong side of the road. That is, it was the wrong side of the road for both of us and for um, British traffic. And he just said, oh, shouldn't we be driving on the other side? And I, I said, ah, oh, yes, we should. And uh, that tremendous um, calmness was something um, sort of within himself that I always remember about Eric. So I'm just going to share a couple of vignettes with you about yet more stuff that Eric did that you might not know about because we've certainly heard about many of the wonderful things that he did or underpinned with his very selfless uh, work for the community. Uh, about a couple of years ago, I was, was able to go to um, the Russian Far East and meet with paleoecologists from that region and Siberia, people working away in institutes with very few resources um, and have terribly old versions of Tilia. And um, when Eric, uh, when I told Eric I was doing this, he immediately um, supplied a bunch of cost-free Tilia um, licenses to the, to the people attending the workshop. And here everybody is uh, getting it onto their computers and making sure uh, they know how to work the, um, the new version. And this has you know, greatly increased um, the uh, efficiency, the visibility um, of Russian paleoecologists to, to present their data to the world. And I, I should say that um, when news of Eric's passing was, was, was heard by, by paleoecologists in Russia, many sent their, um, expressed their sadness um, at his loss. They might not have ever met him, but like so many other people, they, they had a debt of gratitude uh, to him and were <clears throat> very, very sad um, about his loss. Now, uh, Yes, it's a, it's a diagram, but those of you who are, are, are still alert will notice that there's some very unusual identifications here. Um, who would have thought that we could have Bromus, Festuca and Puxinellia in our diagram? Well, we can, of course, if it's an ancient DNA diagram, a sedimentary DNA diagram. Um, and one of Eric's absolutely latest projects was, was um, being instrumental in the Neotoma groups um, 
working towards how to incorporate in a sensible fashion uh, the big data that um, uh, basically uh, comprises uh, DNA records, particularly ancient sedimentary DNA, which, which are in a sense a parallel to other uh, records such as, as pollen records. And what was amazing is that, um, well, not amazing, it was typical that Eric immediately um, took up this new challenge he was intrigued by and very rapidly grasped exactly what we needed to do, uh, what kind of elements of these, these massively expanded data sets we needed to hone in on to, to be able to, to record for posterity the key um, DNA uh, features plus the uncertainties that are associated with them. So that was in fact what Eric was doing right up until um, the time of his death amongst, amongst other things. Um, I suspect that uh, a lot of us saw Eric in person for the last time at the wonderful 2019 INQUA meeting in, in Dublin. Um, and then at that meeting as always, it was such a pleasure to meet over a beer or for a meal with Eric. Um, there. He was always so positive. He always told a good tale, but unselfconsciously and disarmingly. If there was anyone who was modest, it was, it was Eric. Um, he always struck me as someone who was absolutely at ease in his own skin. He therefore had much positive energy to give out, outward to other people. One Elwa always felt sort of better and more positive after an evening out with Eric or a field trip in which Eric participated. He was, in that respect, a very, very special person. And I, beyond all his marvelous contributions to our field, which are truly unique and truly extraordinary, Eric, the person, uh, was also a very, very special um, person. Um, to quote, to misquote Joni Mitchell, you don't know what you've got till it's gone. I think we all knew a lot about what we had when Eric was among us. And it is now so sad that he's gone. And I would say in his memory for him, let us all reach out to each other now and, and, and show our appreciation for each other and what we do in our wonderful paleo community. I think it's only a community like this that could bring such a wonderful memorial to bear for Eric. So, so long, Eric, you're greatly missed, but you're still, will always remain much loved. Thank you, Mary. That that was really emotional. I, um, I really liked your words. I think we have to move to the next speaker, also a close friend to Eric, also in that picture and in so many other pictures that we've seen today, especially the ones in Pantin in the river camp. So uh, this is Henry Lam. Uh, I think you, you are around, right, Henry? Close friend of Eric and a close friend of me too. Uh, that's my pleasure. Henry? Thank you, Graciela. I'll yeah. try and share my screen now. All right, good. Well, I've got so many good memories of Eric and regrettably rather few photographs. So I've been really pleased to see him. Um, uh, so many photographs from other people today, and I'm actually going to repeat some of those. Um, and I'm very happy to share my personal memories of a very good friend with you all. For, I first met Eric when I was an extremely naive, newly arrived student from Ireland in Minneapolis in 1976. And I learned pollen morphology, pollen identification from Ed Cushing, and went, went over to his lab every week. And Eric was there working on his PhD thesis and he was always ready to share his expertise, his knowledge. And I hugely admired and benefited from Eric uh, right from the very start of my acquaintance with him. We also had lots of fun in those days, as you can see from this extraordinary photograph of two very hairy students 
And thank you to Nancy for providing this um, reminder of 1979. We can't see your photographs. Oh, we can't. I wonder why. When you share the screen, Henry, do you have to choose probably uh, which yeah. uh, software or which okay. desktop you want to share? Yeah, now, now it's coming. Now it is coming. Okay. Yes, now we can see. So, Eric, uh, yes. Right, I just wanted to, so I'm sharing my many memories, my rather few photographs with you all. I'm very happy to do that. Uh, way back in 1979, I was a student uh, in Minneapolis. From, well, started in 76 and left in 79. And Eric was there as, as a, a wonderful friend and also extraordinarily knowledgeable and, and great advisor as well. So I enormously admired him in those days. And we had fun in those days with these, this extraordinary photograph, but both of us very much hairier than we've been since then. Then in 1978, I left for Cambridge and worked with as a, my PhD with John Burks. And a couple of years later, Eric and Jane arrived. So I was really pleased to have that bridge between my time in Minnesota and my time in Cambridge. One of the standout memories of those years for me was the time that we all went to Morocco in a Land Rover across Spain and the Straits of Gibraltar, the first of my 10 years of field trips to Morocco. And that was, I think, in April 1982. Uh, at the very start of that trip, I misread the timetable for the boat from Plymouth. Um, um, and we had to wait a couple of days. And fortunately, my colleagues lent us a cottage in Wiltshire where we relaxed after all the hectic packing up in the Land Rover before we left. And we, we relaxed there and I think watched the Pope on TV with one of my memories. Um, for that trip, I only had a vague idea of the lakes in the middle atlas that we were likely to core. And it was Eric who pinpointed the best site to Gamamin with its two lakes and its atlas cedars. So um, I owe him a great deal for that choice of site for Tigamamin became one of my earliest uh, uh, scientific successes, including my only nature paper, and undoubtedly influenced my subsequent career. Jane and Eric were the only ones in our team, I remember, who didn't get sick at some stage. We learned later that Jane's secret was a daily dose of garlic. Now, there have been many other times and places over the years that I've met up with Eric again, each time so pleased to see him. And um, so, um, so pleased to see him. Uh, and his, his smile, his warmth, his stories, and of course, his superb scholarly presentations at, at conferences. As Mary's mentioned in 2011, in 2011, Eric, Mary Edwards, my wife Emma and I, we explored the Jurassic Coast for a few days, seen in these pictures. Eric, we, we remember standing on the cob at Lyme Regis and being showered with spray from the waves. So the top left picture of here is Eric looking a little bit wet after one of the bigger waves hit us all. By 2017, I met up with Eric and Jane in Amsterdam, where we stayed in a wacky but rather pleasing hotel with a student sort of restaurant called Mama's on the ground floor. We did all the usual touristy things, visiting the Van Gogh Museum, Rembrandt's house, took a boat ride through the city canals. Hence the photos that I've got of that, the few photos of Jane and Eric in an amazing seafood restaurant where we treated ourselves to tiered plates of seafood. But my freshest and now most precious memories of Eric are of August 2019, when he stayed with us at our house in, in Ireland after the Inqua meeting in, in Dublin. We had a party there, and uh, these are, as Mary, Mary's already shown you some of these photographs showing Eric at his relaxed and most animated and most fun uh, way. Um, after the party, Eric and I drove out to the wilds of Western Ireland, where we went out on my sister's yacht and out into the Atlantic towards the westernmost islands and then anchored in a bay 
where we gutted and cooked and ate freshly caught mackerel. So one of my, my latest memories are very, very f f fond of Eric indeed. He was a wonderful person to be with on all these occasions. So appreciative, so knowledgeable and such fun. I am privileged to have been his friend. Thank you. Thank you, Henry. Thank you also for 